Welcome back. Now that your stuff has been incubating overnight, now it's time to add the reagents and read the results of your API. First thing you have to do though um, is check your purity plate. You have to make sure it's not mixed because if it is mixed there's no use doing the API because it's not going to be right. So if it is mixed just um, make a sub of it of a single colony that you want and sub it to a blood plate and incubate that overnight in CO2 and then you can repeat your API tomorrow. If your purity plate isn't mixed, you can start adding reagents. So if you add one, yeah, you add one drop of VP1 and one drop of VP2 to the VP well. And this has to sit for 10 minutes before you can read the results. Now the VP well was one of the ones that yesterday you had um, filled up the entire cupule, and this is why I said you don't want to overflow the cupule because you still have to put two drops of reagent in there. And it probably will overflow a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. You'll still get a color change if it's positive. After that, um, you add one drop of the TDA reagent to the TDA well, and if it's positive, it will automatically turn a very dark brown. And then after that, you add a drop of James solution to the indol well, and if that's positive, it's going to turn dark pink or dark red right away as well. Always make sure you do the indol test last because the fumes from that reagent or from that reaction actually um, interfere with the TDA and the VP re reactions. So you do the other ones first and then you do the indol last. So now you have all your reactions and they're all complete and you can start reading them. You want to transcribe your um, results onto these sheets, these API sheets that come with the kits. And I have a blank one up here that you can see and then underneath you'll see one that's already filled out. So you can kind of see how it works. Each positive reaction is assigned a number value and then um, each section you add up the number values of positives and you put it down at that the bottom there and it comes up with some sort of code and then what you do is um, you uh, go onto the API website and enter your code and it'll give you an indication of what your um, specimen is. So as you can see there's a spot for your oxidase result and uh, I forgot to tell you this the last time but I want you to remember that when you're doing an oxidase test you can only use colonies from the blood plate and not McConkey because remember the color of the McConkey auger can interfere with the oxidase test result. So always make sure you take uh, colonies from the blood plate when you're doing an oxidase. So once you result your API and you calculate your code, you go into the uh, API website and you enter your code and it will give you um, what your organism is and the percentages of what the probability of it is. And I know at Lancaster General Hospital it has to be at least 75% um, positive for say E. coli or whatever. Anything less than that, there's a chance it could be mixed and it's just, it's not going to work and you probably have to repeat it. So we're going to go ahead and go to the video of um, resulting the API. Okay, so you've checked your purity plate and it's fine and you've incubated everything overnight. So you want to take the lid off and once you take the lid off, you never put it back on until you're ready to throw the whole thing away. So... Um, as you can see, there's been some color changes, some pink and some uh, yellows, so we're good there. You have to have at least three visible color changes in order for the test to be valid, so we're fine. So you want to grab your reagents now. You want to grab them um, a little bit more gracefully than what I'm doing there. You want VP1, VP2, just right there, VP1 and VP2. And you want to put one drop of each into your VP well. And you want to make sure that you don't put the dropper too close to the specimen because you don't want any splashback. If you get splashback on your reagent then you have to throw the whole reagent bottle away because it is contaminated. And if you happen to get a bubble in there, no worries, it'll blow away. The VP you have to let sit at room temperature for 10 minutes before you can read the color, so you want to do that one first. The second one you want is the TDA and you want to put, even though I'm putting two drops in here, that's wrong, you want to put one drop in the TDA well and that, if it's positive, will change immediately to a dark brown. The next one you want to do is the James solution, which goes in your indol. That also will change immediately. If it's, uh, if it's positive, it changes, you'll see, to that dark red. You have to do the indol last because fumes from this reaction may interfere with the VP 
and um, the TDA reaction. So you want to do the indole last. And as you can see, um, shown here, the positive um, sugars will turn yellow. The um, if the gelatinase or the H2S are positive, that whole thing will be black. So now um, you want to go ahead and get out your sheet for in order to uh, record all the results. And there is an, an insert too in the in the box of, with the kit that will tell you what the positive and negative reactions look like. All right, so now we go ahead and we grab our sheet and start writing down our numbers. There are circles for the corresponding wells, and you just put down on the very top um, circles there whether or not your reactions were positive or negative. Then after you're finished with that, each of those positive reactions has a numeric value, and you um, add them up as far as the sheet goes, and then you come up with a microcode, and then you go to the API website, and you enter in that microcode, and it will let you know what um, organisms it could be, and the percentages thereof. So you might have something that's 99% for E. coli. So for at Lancaster General Hospital, we do require that it is at least 75% probability, uh, otherwise um, we can't accept the result because it's just not high enough probability. So we go ahead and we are doing the microcode now. And you can go to the API web and figure out what it is. Okay, so there it is, APIs from start to finish. We hope that you found these videos valuable, and we hope that all of your API results are greater than 99% probability. Thanks for watching.